The 8-2 Washington State Cougars are heading to Corvallis this Saturday to face the 4-6 Oregon State Beavers. It's a battle of the remaining two Pac-12 schools. Washington State is looking to bounce back after a loss in New Mexico this past weekend. They've had their fair share of difficulties on the road, and Oregon State is looking to just make it to a bowl game. They would have to win their remaining two games in order to get to six wins and get into a bowl game. Washington State wide receiver Kyle Williams is looking to keep his hot streak alive. He has three receiving touchdowns in each of the past two games six over the last two games. Kyle currently has 11 receiving touchdowns on the year, which is second in the country, only behind San Jose State's Nick Nash, who has 14. And Williams is looking to catch up to former standout WCU wide receiver Gabe Marks, as Gabe has the WCU single season receiving touchdowns record when he caught 15 touchdowns back in 2015. Williams is just four touchdowns away with three games remaining, including the bowl game. And if you will be in Corvallis this weekend, whether you're a Coug fan or a Beaver fan, make sure to look out for myself walking around. I'll be hopping around the bars and walking outside the stadium as well as inside the stadium, asking various fans about their thoughts on college football currently, the Pac-12, and NIL. So let's get into this week's matchup preview with Dylan Howe. But before we do, the sponsor of this podcast is Black Label Supplements. They are a third-party tested, athlete-approved supplement company here in the Pacific Northwest. Make sure to check out blacklabelsupplements.com. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off. And personally, my favorite is the Sour Watermelon Creatine. And as always, if you or somebody you know is thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing a property anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, reach out to myself, Connor Webb. I'm actually a mortgage broker full-time when I'm not making these sports videos, and it's my goal to help as many sports fans and athletes get into the home of their dreams, so make sure to reach out. I'll have my contact information in the description of this video. And with that, let's get into the podcast. The 8-2 Washington State Cougars are heading to Corvallis this weekend to face the 4-6 Oregon State Beavers the final two universities in the Pac-12. Oregon State is looking to make it to bowl eligibility. Washington State is looking to bounce back after a loss to New Mexico this past weekend. And before we get into it, a lot of this information that we're going to get into is via cougfan.com. If you're not already, go subscribe to cougfan.com. They have tons of great information about the Cougars and the matchups upcoming. But let's start with a quote from Jake Dickert's presser the other day in which he talked about Oregon State. He stated, Oregon State is not our buddy. They would have left us as fast as we would have left them. He also states that Oregon State is now one of WCU's big rivals now. Dylan, what do you think? Is this just kind of talk for the headlines and for the, the upcoming game, or is this what's the underlying message here? Underlying message, it's coach speak. I mean, it's essentially a coach motivating a team that just got their asses kicked at the hands of New Mexico, due in large part to their defense being gassed and their defensive coordinator not putting the right game plan over the second half in front of them, and their head coach also not opting to not call any of his three timeouts. Each timeout had their own seat on the plane ride home to Pullman as well. So, you know, I, I wouldn't get too worked up about it. You've seen some Beaver fans on, on X worked up about it today saying, oh, how can you say this? Canzano even said it, you know, on the Cougar Crimson podcast with Puck. You can't say these things when you're when you're lockstep. Well, the the university presidents are lockstep with each other on the field. You know what? Cougs have taken nine out of ten and their head coach is trying to get that get them back on track this week in a, in a road environment where I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Beaver fans and I'm sure Reeser is going to be full for senior day. And really, you know, it's, it's kind of the last gas for, for Oregon state, you know, they've put up 20 points over their last three games. They were just blanked by air force. We still don't know who their starting quarterback may be. We'll get into that later on in the podcast. The other aspect of this is, you don't want to give teams bulletin board material and especially teams like Oregon state that are just really have nothing left to play for really in the season. And you can guarantee that's going to be on the bulletin board for the beeves this week. But, you know, I think, I think Dickert was just trying to trying to motivate his team and just let, let them know like, Hey, they're not our buddies this week. We're still trying to crack some schools and go out there and win a football game. Yeah, all that Oregon State has left to play now is to try to make it into a bowl game. If they do win out the next two games, then they would have six wins. So that's enough drive for the Beaver team to where you got to go into Corvallis, not messing around. You, you got to take care of business. In the next two weeks for the Beavs are not easy. They get us, and then they've got to go at Boise State. So it, it's tough sledding, and and honestly, you're likely seeing a team that starts their season off four and one, a lot of momentum, and and losing seven in a row. To end the year and kind of adding to the the presser of jake dickert 
He also mentioned that John Mateer apparently did not practice all week. This was news to us. We had no clue about this until I was watching the presser. Apparently in the game versus Utah State, there was a big gain by Mateer in which he fumbled and Mateer ended up hurting his foot. They apparently thought that it might've been broken even. So the direct quote from Dickert was, Zebby was ready to go. So once we knew it wasn't broken, we knew we'd get John back eventually. If not this week, John's a warrior right out the gate. He did everything he could. Going back to this game against New Mexico, John started the game 11 for 11, 221 yards and two touchdowns in the air before his first incompletion. And I mean, he finished out that Utah State game. You didn't even, it didn't even look like he was hurt. So this was, this was news to me. Yeah, I still ran the ball nine times for 65 yards against New Mexico. Um, and, and it really didn't look like he was hobbling or, or hurt at all. So, I mean, obviously that's news to everybody when when Digger kind of came out and, and said it. And, and I feel like coaches do that all the time when the the injury concern clears. Oh, hey, by the way, we, we didn't know if we were going to have him. And I mean, some of those plays in New Mexico, those were some of the most impressive plays that I've seen from John Mateer all year that that touchdown that he got in order to set the single season quarterback rushing uh, record for touchdowns with 12. And then also the, the drive in the second half of the game, he, he broke out like a 15, 20 yard gain after juking three guys. I mean, just some insane yeah. athleticism that he's showing off. Well, you know, one, one little aspect, I, I really don't want to talk about this New Mexico game anymore. Um, but I, I had no idea that Albuquerque has a higher elevation than, than Denver. It, 5,312 feet out there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So, you know, it makes sense why you kind of saw the gas defense in that third and fourth quarter. You know, presumably there's a lot of things that went into that. The offense not doing a, a, a damn thing in the third quarter. And, you know, New Mexico decided that, hey, these guys are gassed. We're going to run the ball 19 of the last 20 plays of the game. And speaking of performances, Kyle Williams, again, had three touchdowns on the day. This is the second week in a row that he had a three-touchdown game. He is now up to 11 re receiving touchdowns on the year, which is currently second in the nation. And he's looking to catch up to former WCU standout wide receiver Gabe Marks, who in 2015 had 15 receiving touchdowns, which is a WCU school record. He has been Matera's most favorite receiver all year. He has 51 receptions, 872 yards, and those 11 touchdowns, all of which lead, all of which lead WCU receiving score. And a quote from Williams, he states, it's kind of contagious. It's like you just get hungry for more. You get that piece of cake and it's, let me get some more. I'm craving those sweets. So I have a sweet tooth for the end zone. Kyle's 11 touchdowns has him tied with five other wide receivers at Washington State. With Kevin McKenzie back in 1997, Chris Jackson also in 97, DeVar Darling in 2002, Dom Williams in 2015, and then Aesop Winston Jr. back in 2019. And those first three names you hear, three receivers that were part of those two Rose Bowl teams. Obviously, that 97 team was fantastic with Ryan Leaf and, you know, at the helm of that offense. And then you have Jason Gesser in the uh, the, the 2 3 season into the into the Rose Bowl. So, yeah, a lot of great names on that list. Aesop Winston, you know, he's kind of been you know, hanging around, straggling around on that Seahawks practice squad, so on and so forth, trying to trying to stay in the league. But yeah, I mean, it's QBU, wide receiver U. I mean, their raid obviously has put Washington State on the map. And, you know, hey, uh, if you're a young receiver, young quarterback, I mean, you see the Washington State logo and and you, you know it, it 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 personifies quarterbacks and it, it accompany, accompanies greatness, you know, at the quarterback uh, position. And you take, take a look at that quarterback room last year, you had three starting quarterbacks in that room, Emmett Brown, San Jose State, he's since lost a job. And then obviously we know what, what Cam Ward and John Mateer have been doing this season. And with 128 more receiving yards, Williams would also become Wazoo's first 1,000-yard receiver since Brandon Arcanado back in 2019. And if he gets to 218 more receiving yards in the last three games, he would tie Dom Williams for 10th most receiving yards in a single season. Again, Williams likely will have three more games with these two final of the regular season and then the bowl game. Yeah, and I think that's very doable for him. I mean, obviously over 180 yards this past week, but there's a guy that I want to see get going who's been kind of not really himself over the last three weeks, and it's Chris Hudson. I mean, just three receptions in New Mexico, only one reception in the Utah State game, and just three receptions in the San Diego State game. So, you know, I'd like to see him get a little bit more usage out there on the field. And you know what? That might happen this week with, you know, maybe an opposing defense is going to decide to double Kyle more often. Or, or, you know, you might see Oregon State 
drop eight and it wouldn't surprise me they they do not get after the quarterback they can't they, they they're one of the worst teams in the nation bottom 10 in total sacks so you know we'll, we'll see what that game plan is this week because obviously um everybody's stealing from everybody when it comes to the tape you know if you find something that's going to really you know get a team in a disadvantage Dis- disadvantageous uh, position. Other teams are gonna are gonna continue that game plan. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the coaching staff has this week, especially uh, Ben Arbuckle and the the offense. And speaking of that third quarter, WCU on the road has been especially poor in the third quarter. They have been outscored forty two to ten in the third quarter on the road this season. And they have not scored a touchdown in the third quarter on the road since the Apple Cup. And then getting into a few more stats of this matchup between Washington State and Oregon State. As you mentioned, for Oregon State with the defense, no team in the country has fewer sacks than the Beavers. They only have six sacks on the season. They also have just have forced just nine turnovers. WSU respectively has 15 sacks and 17 turnovers so far this season. Cook fan goes to say that Oregon State's pass defense is respectable, yielding 212.4 yards per game. But they're also giving up 182.6 rushing yards per game, which is 105th in the country. And looking at last week, the Cougs gave up 360 rushing yards on the ground to New Mexico. This article states that Hankerson is going to be the player to watch. Hankerson is listed at 5'8", 203, and has been the the best spot uh, on the Beavers' offense so far. Yeah, you know, the, the, the Beavers came into this season with a great dual running back tandem and Jam Griffin and, and Anthony Hankerson. And, and Hankerson transferred by way of Colorado, so he was on the Dion train last year. Jam Griffin hasn't played since 10 10 dash five. So he, he hasn't, he hasn't played in, in some weeks. And that was a, you know, that that's a big loss for them. We'll see if, you know, he's, he's available this week. He's a senior, senior day. You know, obviously those guys are going to try and do the, the, their best job to, to be available, but he has been unavailable for the last three or four games. So um, that's a plus for the Cougs on that end. And then when you're kind of taking a look at this, this passing attack by the Beavs, they only have four passing touchdowns on the year. Yeah. You heard that, heard that correctly. That's insane. Uh, I, I want to say Navy and Army each have more passing touchdowns uh, than than the Beavs. I'll, I'll I'll double check that. But in, in terms of receiving, they have one guy that's caught sixty five balls this year, Trent Walker. He's obviously their number one go to receiver. But other than that, I mean, their their next closest receiver is Hankerson with twenty three receptions. And then everybody else is 19, 15, 16, 16. So that just goes to show you the offense has just been a train wreck there this year. Three different quarterbacks have played. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw three different quarterbacks play for the Beavs this Saturday. If you're going to be in Corvallis this weekend, whether you're a Coug fan or a Beaver fan, make sure to look out for myself. I'll be walking around throughout the bars, outside the stadium, inside the stadium, asking various fans about the college football in general, the NIL stuff that's going on, the Pac-12 and, and the future of what that looks like. And if you'd like to be in a video, come up, say hey, and I'd be happy to get you on. We would be remiss if we didn't give you guys an update on Cougar basketball. Uh, David Riley and the Cougs, you know, fresh after a, a tough loss in Iowa where, you know, they essentially were in the driver's seat of that basketball game for about 37 minutes. Then the turnovers came and, and you kind of see the lack of experience in some of our in some of our guards and Nate Calmese. And, and, and it was tough because Calmese had a fantastic game. But hey. You come back to Beasley, you're playing a Northern Colorado team that has a pretty darn good little program over there. Dalton Connect uh, obviously started his career there before transferring to Tennessee last season. He's now with the Lakers. And this wasn't going to be an easy game. And and this has an opportunity uh, for it to be a, a, a quad three home victory. Cougars take care of business. Biggest thing, uh, biggest takeaway was Cedric Coward. He's He's been far too passive. In, in the first four games, he had a couple games where he erupted in a, you know, a five to seven, seven minute span where he was a microwave man, you know, was six to 10 points, but you just haven't seen him take advantage of, you know what, if he's got a mismatch and he's on the block and seeing him with his back to the basket 
and really seeing that mid-range game as well as that post game. And he was fantastic. Fran Fraschilla was on the call. He's a major ESPN personality, always a big time draft guru and a guy that's, you know, trying to make his way around the country in the early portion of the year to see these prospects. And he was ecstatic um, with seeing Cedric Coward last night. And, you know, I, I took a quick quote from the game from Fran Fraschilla. He said, this is a bright sign for David Riley's club, the aggressiveness of Cedric Coward tonight. Um, he finished 12 for 18, 30 points. Second time in his career, he scored 30 points. Both have come against Northern Colorado the first time at Eastern. And, you know, it was just a great bounce back game. You also saw Isaiah Watts bounce back with four three pointers. He had a pretty brutal game in Iowa. And, you know, you're going to see this team live and die by the three. We saw him kind of die by the three in the Iowa game. I, I wouldn't even say they died by the three because they kind of lost that game themselves at the end. But, yeah, you know, they got a great opportunity coming up this week, Thursday. They're going to be playing in Spokane. And we got to shout out the, the Cougar Collective here because, folks, if you cannot get to Spokane, well, at least buy a ticket for someone that might be able to make it there. Uh, a, a, a select amount of the the uh, proceeds from each ticket sold will be pushed towards our NIL collective. So that's a great opportunity to get out. David Riley, a little bit of a homecoming there. He's going to you know, face a team where he spent 13 to 15 years of his, uh, of his, you know, early portion of his head coaching career and just how he got into coaching up there. So won't be an easy game uh, as well. You're going to have a, a fair amount of Eastern uh, Washington fans there, but you like what you're seeing so far from the Cougs. They need a home serve here. And then next week uh, you have their Risker non-conference basketball tournament down in Palm Springs where the Cougs are going to get Fresno State. Lawan Watts' high school coach is now the head coach at Fresno State. Um, they were one of the final bidders for Lawan uh, when he entered the transfer portal this season. So it's, that should be that should be a, a, a good time. And you, you're going to hope that WSU can take care of Fresno State and then SMU can take care of Cal Baptist because they'll get the winner of that game. And SMU right now is hovering around 70 to 77 in Ken Palm. So that's going to have an opportunity for possibly, a, for sure, a quad two victory. It, depending on how good SMU is this year, it could be a quad one opportunity. So Cougar basketball, uh, four and one, and you know they they're just a fun team to watch. And to tie it all together, a, a shout out again to the Cougar Collective. You can visit cougarcollective.org. Make sure to sign up to the 1890 Club. It's eighteen dollars ninety cents a month. Let's keep these guys in Pullman. You could be drinking the Old Crimson Coffee or the Old Crimson Lager. And for more content like this, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM. Watch the games this weekend. Comment below your thoughts on the Cougs, and we'll see you in the next one.